Yeah, that's a great question. It's funny because I, you know, like I, I did used to get pushback. I almost never get pushback anymore. Now I just say it, and people go, "Yeah, I get it." You know, because because they recognize it in their own lives. But when I first started talking about the late '90s, early 2000s, uh, there was there was a lot of pushback just from people who who like philosophically didn't like the idea um, that that also were concerned about the jobs that were already being lost in manufacturing in particular, but they were lost long before that in commodity business. And uh, in some cases now in services businesses as, as they commoditize. And they, and so one of the things they often did just to get them to understand that, 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 you know, that economic change is inevitable is, uh, is I, I'd ask them um, how many people here have ever killed a chicken for dinner? <laughs> and uh and uh you know and, and and like you'd have three or four hands raised in a group of 50 people or something and the other people would turn around and look at these people like they were from mars because they just could never imagine having to kill a chicken themselves for dinner and i and i said i said you go back 100 years guess what half the country killed chickens for dinner <laughs> purdue farms didn't exist you know this is what you did uh, and, and then and just realize that. And I, and then I asked the service guy, so how many people still change their own oil in their cars? And always fewer people change their own oil in their cars than people had killed a chicken for dinner. <laughs> and I said, because that's a, that's a service that you want. So, so again, it's a matter of paying people, um, for what we used to do ourselves. They said, we all used to be responsible for our own services, for our own experiences, excuse me. I remember when I grew up, uh, the big weekly family experience was Sunday dinner. That Sunday dinner was different than every other night. It was in the late, it was in mid late afternoon, not in the evening. It was everybody was expected to be there. It was much bigger because you sort of skipped lunch and you didn't have dinner, and and you sort of talked about your week and everything. And I, you know, I had a good friend I remember that uh, that I would invite over for Sunday dinner on occasion, and he would have a great time, and because uh, he was, uh, you know, he didn't have any family in the area. So it, uh, you know, just, it was an experience that we had. Another one is birthday parties, right? When I grew up, moms would invariably throw the birthday party experience uh, with, with handmade games like pin the tail on the donkey and things like this. Uh, and uh, then over time, by the 1990s, 2000s, you know, most moms, not everybody, but most moms would go someplace else and have them throw the experience for their kids and their friends, you know, whether it's Chuck E. Cheese's or McDonald's Playland or a museum or some other a bowling alley, some other place out there, movie theater too. And uh, so that's just how, it's how the, how the economy changes. So again, I, I, I rarely get that, uh, that sort of objection anymore because you, you, you can't, you, you can't object because you can see it all around you. It's in the air that we breathe today. Uh, this this notion that how much we prefer experiences over things.